Hello and welcome. My name is Sean Lacey of Lacey Maths and Stats Consultancy. And this latest video is a demonstration on doing a chi-square test to complement a cross tab in InVivo. When you produce a cross tab in InVivo, what this enables you to do is to suggest whether or not a relationship or an association exists between your two nodes or a node and an attribute or whatever the two measurements are that you have selected. What it does not enable you to do is actually to draw a conclusion and to say that there is a relationship or there is no relationship. If you want to do something like that, in statistics, what you'd need to apply is a chi-square test. And you cannot apply a chi-square test in in vivo. What you'd actually have to do is you'd actually have to export the table that in vivo has produced, the cross tab. You'd export that to Excel. And then you can apply the chi-square test in Excel. And I suppose that's one uh, point that I just want to, I suppose, demonstrate in this video is how do we actually apply a chi-square test in Excel based on the data that we've obtained in, in from in vivo. But then when I was thinking of uh, pr uh, putting together this video, I was then thinking that it doesn't necessarily align with, I suppose, the previous videos that I've uploaded. And a lot of the videos that I've uploaded so far uh, to date have been dealing with RStudio and SPSS syntax. And big, I mean, this was a big advocate of data transparency where possible. And I just felt then that when I, if I was going to just demonstrate how to do it, the chi-square test using Excel, and ultimately it's to complement the, cr the cross tab in vivo, I think for completeness and to be in, in line and to be some way consistent with my previous videos, it would be just good to actually look at, uh, I suppose, getting the chi-square test using our studio to complement the cross tab from in vivo, and equally doing a chi-square test uh, using SPSS syntax to complement the cross tab in in vivo. And this is just, I suppose, mainly just down to, uh, as a researcher, you might find that you could be doing in vivo for your qualitative analysis, and then you might be using our studio for your quantitative analysis and your or your SPSS for quantitative analysis. And I just felt for maybe for that consistency, it would be just good to maybe show how do we actually get the chi-square test using the results that we have from in vivo. Okay, so uh, hopefully if I find this uh, uh, of interest and of uh, benefit and help to you in your own research. Okay, so to, to generate the cross tab, what I'm going to look at is the, um, the the sample project that InVivo have on the environmental change. I'm going to look at the explore ribbon and I'm going to produce the cross tab. Now we could get the same uh, cross tab back if we did a matrix coding as well, but I'll just stick with the cross tab because I suppose it's just uh, it's kind of a bit more traditional. Um, the, the codes I'm going to look at is I'm actually going to look at the attitude node and from the for the attitude node there are four child nodes or sub nodes which are mixed negative and neutral positive opinions. So I'm just going to take that as one of the measurements and then what I'm going to look at is another measurement is I'm going to look at the a person the classification for a person and I'm going to look at the gender uh, uh, attribute. Okay, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to run that query and it gives me this uh, cross tab which is perfect okay now just the one thing just to be careful with here when you're looking at this cross tab what it's presenting here I suppose in the table here it's it's saying that there's 10 females that had a mixed opinion there's 44 females that had a negative opinion but then overall you actually have 47 females so what you're just seeing in this table is you're seeing that you have females that have have both mixed and negative uh, opinions you could have females that had all four opinions and equally so for the male so it's, it's just to be careful with that that this row total doesn't actually add, add up to the sum of the entries in, in for each row okay so just for the purposes of this video without kind of going off med, uh, messing around with that uh, matrix or the cross tab I'm just going to press the coding references and I'm just going to get a cross tab which is just telling how many references there were from females and males across the four opinion types. Okay? And so what what we I suppose for the purposes of this video where I want to kind of take this then is this in here will enable us to say look that to I suppose suggest that there is a relationship or suggest that there is no relationship. But what is always nice in research is to be able to draw a conclusion where possible and in order for us to draw a conclusion we need to do a chi square test. Okay. So InVivo won't do that for us, so we need to export the, the table that we have. So InVivo has this nice uh, add-on where you can export the cross tab results and it will export it to an Excel file. So that's perfect. And I'm going to put it in here, so that's fine. And I'll call it cross tab query. Perfect. Okay, so save that. So I'm just going to go to that folder. I'm going to open up the cross tab query, and this is what we have. 
okay now I just know because I, I know obviously where I want to go with this video that I'm looking going to be looking to import this into Excel and I just know Excel has a problem with the font for some of these measurements so I'm just going to change all this to Calibri 11 and there should be no uh, issue with uh, importing it in, into Excel now I know that's a slight change in the, the data with no, with no transparency on it but uh, hopefully you can forgive me for that so I'm just going to leave this as the the, I suppose the raw set here so this is the data that we have from Invivo and I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to put this into sheet 2 and so for sheet 2 here what I'm going to look at is applying the chi-square test in Excel okay so that this will be the first part all right so what we actually have here is we have the actual uh, values okay so your observed values now when you try to apply the chi-square test if I type up the function chi and there we have it here square test what it needs is it needs the actual values which are your eight uh, observations here okay for the males and females across the four opinions not the row totals or the column totals but it then also needs the expected so we just need to do that calculation here okay so i'm just going to put in a bit of information here and i'm just going to call this expected okay so what we need to do here is so the, how to do the expected calculation it's your row total times your column total divided by your grand total so if we're looking for look what do we expect to happen for the females that were negative uh, that had mixed opinions we would take 34 multiply it by 229 divided by 601 okay so I'll just take that here and multiply by u and then divide by u and this will give me this back okay now I want to copy and paste that across the other entries I don't when I copy and paste I want to kind of keep the record of what we have here so this should work fine if I fix that just as a I suppose a sanity check are those calculations correct if I tally them up I should get the same entries that I have here 229 372 I do I don't need those so I'm just going to delete them there that was just a quick check to make sure everything was okay with that okay so now I'm going to look at doing the chi-square test. When we do this chi-square test, the null hypothesis is that there is no association between the two measurements. And uh, the alternative then is that there is association. So the, for the chi-square test there, we first put in the actual values, which are the uh, eight values that we've observed from in vivo. And then we we'll put in the expected values as the next. And we run that off and we end up with this p-value. I'll just round it to four decimal places. And we'll end up with a p-value of 0.4. 4579 now how you draw your conclusion will ultimately be dependent on your level of significance I'd imagine you're going to be working off a 5% level of significance but sometimes in some kind of a social studies you might work off a 10% level of significance in either case for either one of those the p-value here is greater than those levels of significance that I stated so here you would fail to reject the null hypothesis so you'd be uh, saying here that uh, there is no necessary not, not necessarily any relationship between gender and the opinions okay now it's not necessarily not not that I'm overly interested in uh, I suppose the, the I suppose the actual result itself what I'm more interested in is how do we get the results okay so the p-value that we get here using Excel is 0.4579 okay so I'm just going to save that so that's the Excel result now I just want to kind of get the same result now using our studio and then getting the same result using uh, SPSS and the reason for doing you doing trying to do the same I suppose ultimately getting the same result but using different packages is more for the transparency in that data analysis and I suppose that the reason for that then is to I suppose to be in line with my previous videos and then maybe for your own research that's what you're actually doing yourself so it could be just uh, I suppose for your own consistency okay so this is where we are with this that's fine I've saved everything okay so now I'm going to come no, I won't come to SPSS I will go to RStudio next so RStudio and I will look to import the data set okay so we'll look to import this so uh, from Excel uh, here and I'm going to look at the crosstab query. I'll take sheet one, so that'll be the default one. So here's sheet one. I'll look. I'll even change it. Now I'm going to be a very kind of nearly lazy with this. I'm going to be very selective on the data that I want. So I don't want the first column. I don't want the last column, and I don't want the last row. So ultimately, if I'm thinking of referencing this, this the second column, this entry of ten is B1. So this is B1 down to C4. Uh, C4. There are the entries that I'd be interested in here. Okay. So uh, I look at b1 down to c4 uh, as far as I know okay so if not I can just check double check that later I'm going to come out of that and what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to call this instead of the long name I'm just going to call it Kai like that and that should tidy up actually you can just see there that I'm off a small bit there I need to put that in as a c5 oh yeah of course because of the because of the row name okay so there there are uh, eight entries okay so there we have it I'm going to import that um, okay so I'm just going to bring this up here just I suppose just so we kind of have our actual script saved somewhere here and get rid of that if I wanted to 
and then come over here. Now this is a very quick way of doing it. Okay, so we can see here that the data set we that we actually have is a very it's basically it is our actual cross tab. So we could actually just run the chi square test on this. So chi square test and we actually can just run it on the actual data set or the data frame that we have here. If we do that, we can see here that we get the p value of 0.4579. So super fast to do this. And you can see but from back here in Excel on our sheet two the p-value was 0.4579. So obviously the results agree with each other, so happy days, okay? The last one then to do, and there's a bit more involved, definitely a bit more involved in doing it in SPSS, if you want to have the transparency of how, when you get the table from in vivo, how do you get the result from SPSS? There is, um, there's gonna be a bit more involved in this, okay? So we'll first look at, I suppose, bringing in the data. So we're gonna look at a file open, so we can't see the Excel file here. Look for Excel, we have it here. The cross tab. I'm going to paste this. I don't want to actually open it. I want to paste it. I want to have that track record for the syntax. Here we have it. Here uh, I'm going to leave all the data that we as we see it here. Okay, and I'm going to just look at sh showing you uh, how we actually restructure this. Okay, so a small bit of work involved with this, but it's kind of, it's worked it at the end. Then when you have that track record. Okay, now um, I won't do any comments to this. I'll try to kind of, just to kind of keep, keep the video as, as, as short as possible if I can. So that, this is just looking at importing the data here. So control R, the data is import, uh, Im imported. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to get rid of this total uh, 118. Okay, so I don't need that measurement. Now I don't. I sure you'd obviously know from my previous videos that I'm not a fan of just manipulating things for the sake of it. I like the track record for it. So I'm going to look at deleting the variables and I'm going to look at stating that variable. So I'm going to delete that. Uh, I'll run this off. So control R and we should have that gone there, and that's it gone. Okay, so that's the first thing. The next thing here, when I think of the data view, I wanna get rid of this total row as well, so I wanna get rid of that information. So I'm gonna do a select cases there, are loads of ways that we can actually do this. So I'm gonna do a select cases, write the if condition, I'm going to just say something very, uh, so I'm going to select anyone with the females that are less than 229, so less than 200, that would be an easy way of doing it, so not greater than 200, so less than 200, that would be an easy way of doing it, press continue, I'm going to delete unselected cases here, I don't mind doing that because I'm going to have the track record for doing it, so coming back here to this, so I'll highlight that guy. So press control R and we have it. So just, I suppose I'm just keep going back to this so we can just see it in steps. Now, what I want to now do, so ultimately the data here is in a long, as in wide format and I want to convert it into a long format. Uh, so I'm going to use the restructure function in, in SPSS. If I want to use that function, I need to actually uh, save my data set. Okay, so I'm going to look at saving it. So I'll save it here. And what I'll do in this case, I'll just call it a cross tab. Okay, so I'm going to need to save it. Again, I'd like this track record of doing that. Uh, I know you nearly say, look, that that makes it very long doing all this, but it, it is worth it at the very end. Okay, so we have this here. So we've it saved. The next thing then is we want to restructure it. We want to convert it into this kind of um, long format if you want to generate this cross tab. So we're going to restructure. We're going to go with the first option here. So that's fine. We only have one measurement. That's fine. Uh, the ID, we don't, we're not going to have any ID uh, the trans, so these are the measurements that we're going to have here. We're going to have these measurements, and there I'm going to call them count, okay? So these are based, because ultimately what they are, they are counting references. So I'm going to put these two measurements together. They're going to be put in the long format, and when they're put in the long format, what do I want to call those measurements? I'm going to call them count. What's going to remain unchanged will be the person is what um, it has imported as, which is basically the opinion. I could look at changing variable names, but I, I get, really do want to kind of keep this video short for you. So I'm just going to leave that there. Press next. Leaving this as one, not changing that. Happy with that. Uh, the sequential numbers. So when when we're stacking the females and the males on top of each other, do we want to code them as one, two, or do we want to leave, leave them as females 47, males 71? I'm going to leave it like this. It's messy, definitely messy, but I suppose it's just to kind of see the link with the in vivo file. So I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to put it as the, the longer name. I'm going to press next. Um, not changing anything here. I'm going to leave, I mean, look, I'll change this one. Keep and treat as fixed variables. So anything that wasn't selected is just going to be kept there, but that's not a concern for us here. I have to just keep pressing next because I want the paste option at the very end. So at the very end, there's the paste option. Now I'm going to press finish. That's pre okay. That's fine with that. Come to, come to the syntax. And we can see here we have it in the syntax. So I'm just going to highlight that, press Control R. Hopefully it all works out nice. And there we have it.
now we have the data in a long format. Now the reason we need it in a long format is in order to run off the cross tab on summary data. See what this is what we have here. We have summary data. We don't actually have raw data. So if we have summary data, we need to tell SPSS that this 10 is actually a magnitude of 10 and the 24 is a magnitude of 24. So what we have to do in that case then is to weight the cases. So we're going to weight it based on that count measurement. That's what this is. That's a count measurement. I'm going to paste that here. Come back to this. So now we're going to weight it like that. So I'm going to press Control R. So now the data is weighted. Last thing then is going to be going off and doing the cross tab. So when we do the cross tab, the person, and again, I just didn't change the variable names, the person that they were the opinion, so they're going to go in as the rows. The index one is essentially uh, the male, females, the male, it's the female 47, the male 71, I think were the numbers. So they're going to go in as columns. And for statistics, I'm going to select chi square test. Press continue, press paste again for the transparency. Come in here. So here we have the cross tabs. I'm going to run that off, and we're hoping for a p value of 0.4579, and we have it as 0.458 because it's rounded to three decimal places. If we really wanted to check here, we could just look here, and we can see there to four decimal places is 0.4579. So I, uh, SP says rounds it to three decimal places. And there we have it. Okay, so the, again, I suppose ultimately, like, where did this all start? Well, what it started from is producing a cross tab in in vivo. When you produce the cross tab, it doesn't enable you to draw a conclusion. If you want to draw a conclusion, you need to do a chi-square test. That a quick, a quick way of doing a chi-square test is to do it in Excel where you export the data to Excel and you work out the expected. So you do the expected calculations and then apply the chi-square test uh, function. Uh, that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, if you are familiar with doing R Studio in your own research, is just actually applying the R, uh, I suppose, importing the data into uh, R Studio and running off a chi squared test from there. Obviously, we get the same p value. The other way of doing it is then using SPSS. A lot of steps to using it in SPSS, but definitely very worthwhile, I would feel, when you're doing it like this, because once you save this uh, script, Oh, uh, sorry, not script, but syntax, that's what we call it when you're in SPSS. When you see save that, you could just run all this off and you'll get this, uh, the result again, okay? So, uh, and you would, I suppose, in my previous videos on SPSS, I would have spent a lot of time, I suppose, on the idea of importing data into SPSS using syntax and the formatting of data. So if you find that this is something of interest, and but yet you feel I'm going too fast, and I go back over my, uh, some of my other videos up, there, uh, up on YouTube and they, they should be a help on this, okay? But uh, overall, look, I just feel that, um, just felt that this would be a nice addition to uh, uh, things that you can get out of in, in vivo, the idea of getting the chi-square test, and these would be just kind of the three main packages. Obviously, there's other packages out there that we could use, but these would, I suppose, be the main ones that I would encounter, and I'd encounter a lot of students using it, okay? Overall, I hope uh, you're happy with the content of the video. If you are, then liking it and sharing it would be brilliant. Subscribing to the channel is excellent if you if you have the time because you'd also get uh, updates on when um, more uploads uh, will occur, and there will be more in the coming weeks on our studio on. Um, SPSS syntax on in vivo, and if, if there's anything else that you might like, I mean, by all means, reach out here. My contact details. has put something into the comment if you want. Uh, if you felt that there was another approach to maybe applying the steps that I've applied here, I feel that, I mean, the sharing of knowledge is absolutely brilliant if we, if we can do that. So, I mean, if you know of other techniques to maybe um, that might be slightly more efficient than the ones that I'm showing here in this video, by all means, throw something into the comment. It will be uh, well received. Uh, but for the moment, that's it. And Thanks very much and all the best.